everyone. That is Laura. This is Kyle, and you're listening to He Said, She Said. Laura, how's it going? Excellent. Thank you very much. So we have a dicey, robust topic tonight to talk about, and it is from a viewer. And I'm going to let you expand on it, but in, in a nutshell, he kind of criticized us generally, and you specifically, concerning... Uh, a post, or I guess a, a conversation that we had a little while back, and, and, and in essence, kind of referenced this idea that the, this concept of unconditional love, it, it, it doesn't exist. There are conditions um, to being in, in part of a relationship, to being part of something, um, a connected relationship. And I think it's something that really messes people up in their marriages or their long-term relationships, not understanding what your role and obligation is within the notion of conditional and unconditional. If love was unconditional, there would be no need for couples to exchange vows. Correct. Because vows are simply a promise, a statement, I am going to do this. I am going to love, honor, cherish, yada, 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 yada. You are establishing, right, a set of conditions that you are going to abide by. Except it's till death do you part, for God's sake. You got no way out except to die. Well, no. You have a way out if those conditions are suddenly broken. Correct. Okay. Hence, it's like an agreement. That's why you you will hear some people, more conservatives, refer to marriage as a marital contract, right? It is a, it's a, I've even heard it, the the term a covenant, right? Which is just a a very Old Testament way of saying a contract. It's an agreement for people to do things, right? However, when that agreement is broken voluntarily, i.e. maliciously, at that point, the condition has been broken, all right? We'll use infidelity. It's the easiest one that comes to all of our minds, correct? A woman or a husband cheats on their spouse. They have broken a marital, they've broken the marital contract. They have broken the marital agreement to love, honor, and cherish the other person, all right? I think that we would all agree that cheating on your husband or wife does not honor them, nor does it love them. Okay, so you've broken the agreement. At that point, if love was unconditional, you would continue the 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 party that has been injured, right? The person cheated on would continue to have the same affection, the same feelings towards that person as if it didn't happen. Now, honestly, does anyone believe that? Now, I know that's a very simplistic answer, okay? And I think that he was referring more to, you had read a reference about like working out, where over time the individual who at one point in their life was very in shape and kind of took care of themselves, and as time moved on, they started to get out of shape and they really just be kind of came, you know, just this bleh person, right? That was kind of the reference, and I believe that he mentioned that specifically, right? I'm just going to say it. Okay, I'm just going to come right out and say it, Kyle. It is an obligation, in my opinion, to come into your, call it a marriage, call it whatever long-term sustainable relationship, loving relationship you want to have, to continue to bring being lovable, um... That is, that's an obligation. Okay, when you, so when you say being lovable, what is, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. The kind of person that, A, you wish to love, and that you hope will allow your partner to love you. And I might not be speaking, I may not be saying this exactly, you know, I didn't really prepare this, but the truth is I'm really tired of hearing people absolve themselves of the responsibility that comes with being part of a sustainably long-term relationship. So how does that sound? How does that sound? uh, What would, give me, give me an example of an argument someone would make to that point. Don't be a miserable bitch. 
Okay. Well, what would this miserable bitch say that would make someone think she's miserable? Oh, a way of being, a way of acting, a way of speaking, a way of expressing oneself within the relationship. Okay, listen, it's not about the contract, okay? It's not about the vow. It's not about the, you know, in Jewish religion, you have a ketubah. You sign it. It's a thing you go I back. I signed one of those. You did? Yes. That's kind of cool. Yes, we sign a ketubah, okay? It's a contract, and we very often frame them, and we put them on the wall of our bedrooms and go, there you have it. We are, you know, forever, you know, locked into each other and this relationship. The problem is then we absolve ourselves of everything that comes with that responsibility, with the signing of that contract, with the committing, the, the exchange of vows. And to that I mean, it is time if people want relationships to, con to, to last the long haul, it is time to step up and bring it. And that means that when you don't feel so lovable, you can say, I don't feel so lovable today, but do it nicely. And if you stop taking care of yourself, and this was the point that I was making in the, in the last video that may have came across as a little insensitive, and maybe it is a little insensitive, insensitive but if you sold yourself, if your, your whole being at the time of meeting and falling in love with this person was to take care of yourself, right? That was something that you, that, that, that you presented to the world and to this person. Then when you stop taking care of yourself, whatever that looks like taking care of, whether that's weight, whether that's fitness, whether that's cleanliness, whatever, don't expect, seriously, don't expect that someone's not going to take notice and that it shifts the dynamic within the relationship. So that's a very specific example of a very general problem that I think all relationships, whether it be marriage yep. or whether it be just a, a dating relationship that invariably finds themselves in. Mm -hmm. and, and to summarize what you said, it's easy for couples to get comfortable with each other and stop doing those things that originally attracted the other person to them. We'll use health. We'll use any number of characteristics, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, when, when you know, at the beginning of a relationship and, 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 you know, especially when the couple meets and so forth, there's certain characteristics that each individual sees in the other person that's attractive to them. It's right. something that they are drawn to, and that can be numerous, okay? So there's not just one thing. However, fast forward, and we'll just use a marriage, right? You know, I, I like to use the phrase a lot of times, we let life get in the way. So, so life begets, begins to get in the way of the relationship, and you always hear it from the guys, right? Well, he stopped trying anymore. He stopped bringing me home flowers. He stopped talking to me. He stopped doing these things, right? You know, that is a general problem. Unfortunately, I think the problem with that is our perception on how we think it needs to be handled, right? So I'll use an example. Let's say, for example, that, you know, you notice, a woman notices all of a sudden, right, that her husband, you know, she does, he doesn't talk to me anymore, right? How, how, you know, how common is that? Is that? The thinking for both, or you know, or he believes, well, she doesn't have sex with me anymore, right? The thinking is to solve the problem. Well, if they will only do that, then right. I will do this. See, that's your problem. You're going into the entire situation thinking first about yourself and then about the other person. You're hoping that you can by through some sort of osmosis or you know, some sort of Jedi mind trick, you know, well, if he will just do this, then I will have sex with him. Or if she will just do that, then I will be willing to sit down and talk with her more. That's the wrong approach. The approach is, you know, I used to, ma I've managed people for 20 something years, right? If you expect them to do something without you doing anything first, most of the time, nothing's going to get done. It's just, there's the gap, right? You're, you can't, you can't have a great marriage in the gap. You have to be the person to take the first step towards the other individual. And the farther you take, 
nine times out of ten, that person will at least notice it and begin to walk towards you in some way. Otherwise, you're sitting back and waiting. Well, I'm going to let, you know, when she does this, then I'll do that. It's a recipe for disaster. You'll get Again, it absolves yourself of taking responsibility. Absolutely. That's, okay, that's, that's so this right. whole thing to me is just a radical shift in, I don't have to do shit anymore. I brought it once, yeah. and I'm a little tired, I'm a little, you know, I'm a little overwhelmed, I'm a little overworked, I'm a little underpaid, whatever it is, I'm stressed, so I need, I need, and, 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 and I'm okay with that, I'm okay with, you know... I'm, I'm needing some things. I'm wanting some things. But you got to be what you also need and want. You have to be willing to. It's a two. It's, a, it's an exchange. It's a sharing. When we started doing these programs, one of the very first episodes that we did, like number two or three or something, right? We talked about intentional romance. Do you remember that conversation? Oh, yeah. Part of intentionality, right? Which, and I, I'm a firm believer that a relationship that is not intentional will go nowhere ultimately. Part of intentionality, part of being intentional by definition is you thinking of the other person before yourself. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Let me see how that plays out. It's like, so if, if I know that my wife is having a bad day, whatever the case may be, I can be intentional about that, recognize that she's going through that, and then do something to maybe try to cheer her up, cook dinner, take the family out, whatever the case may be. But in me making that decision to do so, I am placing her needs ahead of my own. Correct. I'm taking that intentional step forward, all right? If you're sitting there with your arms crossed, well... I'm not going to have sex with him until he does yada, yada, yada. Or I'm not going to talk with her or do all that until she does yada, yada, yada. There's no intention there because you're thinking of yourself first and them second. Here's the thing about intentionality or intentionalism, as, as I like to refer to it. It actually takes, it, it takes thought. It takes a um, little strategy. It takes a little effort. It, it may not be your impulsive reaction to something. And that piece of it is really often left out of the equation. And I understand that it happens over the time. You know, even my marriage, my marriage was 15 years. Okay, my, my relationship with my ex-husband was 15 years. My marriage was 12 years. That's a long time. And I, you know, and I was in it through the, you know, the having kids and raising kids and young kids and working and all of that stuff. And, 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 I, and I get all of the millions of excuses of why, you know, it should just be, right? It should just be. It shouldn't have to be so hard. But the truth is, it's not that hard. But it does take a, a consistent effort. And I think people don't want, they, they, they don't want to think of being in a relationship that's extraordinary and hot and passionate is also um, needing e effort, requiring effort. But let me tell you, if something's going to last the long haul, you know, everybody can fall in love, right? We can all have a mad, passionate, hot, sexy summer fling. I mean, it's, it's not, you know, that's not rocket science. But to take it to something that is really extraordinary and actually has a chance of survival, you got to make this commitment. You can't constantly go around absolving yourself of responsibility. Call it conditional. Call it unconditional. I don't give a shit what you call it. But it's part of bringing it. It's really part of bringing it every day. Every day. I, I, I think that it's easy, Laura, to, to, to use your words absolve ourselves from moving towards the middle in the relationship as opposed to both individuals sitting on the fringes, right? And the reason it's easy to absolve themselves, and I'm going to write about this, I was just thinking about it, right? 
we have bought into this notion of consumer romance. <laughs> Here's what I mean by that. We approach the relationship by what it does for us. If I am going to be sitting on the, the fringes, right, and I'm not willing to move in to my partner, the reason why is because in the back of my mind, I'm asking myself, well, if I move in, what is he or she going to do? What are they going to do for me? Ladies and gentlemen, that's consumer romance. You are in the relationship purely for what it does for you, right? Right. That's why the hot summer fling works so well because you get so much out of it. It's like, you know, it's like two opposing magnets, right? You're just consistently pushing against each other because the one person is only thinking about what it's going to give for me and the other person's thinking the exact same thing. And ladies and gentlemen, that's never going to work. You know, relationships are give and take. We all forget the give part. Yeah, and I, I actually have given up on the give and take concept myself because I, 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 I hate what it symbolizes as far as I give you an inch, you give me an inch. I'll give you half an inch, you give me a half an inch. Bring it every day to share, right? If I bring it every day, if I'm with you and I am going to come forward to take Sheryl Sandberg's, you know, quote of the uh, of, of 2013 leaning in right if I'm leaning into you all the time every day you're gonna lean back and, into yes but with this caveat what are you leaning in for are you leaning in for the betterment of the relationship itself or because you really want to get something in return see that was it you know, has to be it has to be if you really, really want it to work. None of the bullshit out there of, oh my God, I really wanted it. I thought it was the one. I'm so tired of the sniveling whining. You're catching me on a night when I'm just like, you know. Apparently you are. But here, I'm, not, I'm done with the sniveling and the whining. If you want it, bring it. You lean in. I lean in because I want to create something extraordinary. And I know that the only way to do that is is to bring it, to share it, to give it. The truth of the matter is, one, you know, we are talking about, you, you know, that 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 there has to be a little bit of a, you know, an ember of 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 caring for each other in there to begin to to do that. You can't start a fire with a cube of ice. Yeah, you got to start a little something, something, and then, but yes, and 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 that's the thing, even. It, it's got to be daily and and getting back to this notion of unconditional you know I'll pull it back to the unconditional or conditional if you stop if you stay on the fringe right if you just stop like what you said I I, I don't believe that there's an obligation to continue to be committed to and or in love with you I don't have to it's a choice. It's a choice, which is what makes it unconditional. I don't care if there's a signed ketubah or a exchange of vows or a wedding ceremony or any of that. It is a choice to be. It has to be viewed as a choice to be in that loving relationship every day. That's a great final thought. I'm assuming that's yours. Uh, yes, it is, as a matter of fact. When you think about, if you're someone who believes that love should be unconditional between a man and a woman in, in a romantic relationship, that is a very selfish position to be in because you have in essence stated, no matter what happens, no matter what I do, I kind of expect you to love me anyway, to, to respect me and to, to honor me no matter what. I may or may not do, no matter how I may may act, no matter what I may say, no matter how things may change over time through my own fault, right? I mean, I'm not talking about this, you know, I don't want to hear somebody say, well, what if someone got an accident? I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about intentional giving up. If you believe that that individual should love you unconditionally, that's a very selfish position to be in, and you're probably pretty unhappy right now. I, I agree. Couldn't agree. Could not agree more. Laura, till next time.
Bye. Bye.